Hello there, hi, assalamualaikum. This is Amna here from My English Matters. It's Tuesday, it's 11 a.m. So it is time for our weekly Facebook Live sessions. Um, session, right? Anyway, today is a special session with Madam Azima. And if you are not familiar with who Madam Azima is, she is one of the creators of My English Matters together with me and Aisha. And um, if you have been following our updates for the past few months, you may know that Madam Azima lost her husband. So it was in March 2021. So Madam Azima uh, has been on a break for the past four months. Uh, she has been teaching our students in Members Monthly and Communicate with Confidence, but the Facebook Live sessions, she took a big break from that. So I've been doing the Facebook Live sessions every single week. I hope you're not bored of me yet. Uh, so, but today she's back. After a four month break, she's back. And today we are going to discuss this topic. It's called how to regain your confidence even after a difficult situation. So I can see some of you here. Assalamu alaikum, Mira. Hello, Bia. Zamani. Wa alaikum salam. Shuhada. Wa alaikum salam. So great to see you. So I'm going to bring on Madam Azima now because she is the one who is going to be uh, sharing her experience and she's also going to share the five ways or the five things that you can do to regain your confidence after a difficult situation. Okay, so Madam Azma, are you ready? Bring you up. Right, yes. Hello. I'm ready. Hi, Salam alaikum. Thank you, Amna, for inviting me to your normal, your Tuesday slot. So, but I am back. I am back. I'm here to share with you some of the experience that I went through and I'll give you as well, hopefully five, uh, no, not five, I think five, yeah, five tips on how to regain your confidence after a difficult situation. That's what I'm yeah. doing. So actually last week we were thinking of uh, talking about uh, answering questions of common questions that our students and our subscribers have been asking us, but I thought it would be a great session to introduce you back into our My English Matters sphere and let you share your story of what you went through and also share the things that you've learned and how you can, and how, how our students can learn from your experience as well. So mm -hmm. first of all, let's start. So how have you been doing? How are you? What have you been doing over the past four months? Yeah, okay, wow. Yeah, I do have, I do have a lot of things to share. So I wanna share things that um, have changed me and transformed me in ways that hopefully that will be applicable to you as well. I mean, you can apply some of the things that I've learned and I didn't learn this on my own. I was surrounded by my amazing in-law, uh, my in-laws, my friends, and my mama, of course, and you guys, my English Matters team, my sisters. But I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you what happened. Um, after I lost my husband in March, of course, it's it's nothing. It's it's nothing. It's some it's something that you don't prepare for. I mean, obviously, it was a shock because it was a heart attack. It was sudden. He wasn't sick. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't do all those things. But when it happened, it happened. And so the only way now that you can, that I can move forward is to, to just keep going. You know, your life has to go on. Yeah, so it was sudden because I remember that morning you were doing a Facebook Live for our students, weren't you? Yes, I did. I was doing a class. And so, so it was, a, it was sudden, it was like, you know, 24 hours, like absolute, yeah. I, I can't say more than that. It was just, it was just, um, it was just tragic. But the things that helped me were the people around me, and so they were giving me strength to to continue and to to sort out things that were unfinished. I would say unfinished business. Like for example, in March when it happened, you know, um, while I was also going through my mourning period, my idah period, you also have to sort out a few things that needed to be sorted out like for example his his belongings you have to do something about it so i know that he would love to give it away charity give it to his brothers and sisters he has uh, 10 siblings you know so it was a pleasure to give away some of his perfumes and shoes and clothes that was that was fantastic i mean i felt like this is something that he would want them to keep and I know that by giving it to them, they will take good care of it and they will continue to wear and give sedekah to him. Like, you know, read it while you're wearing his shoes, recite al-fatiha to him. So that's what we did, you know, giving up 
sorting out his stuff and his office as well. Uh, so my brothers and sisters went to his office and cleared out his office to give uh, to make way to, uh, for the new head of department because he was the head of department as well. Um, yeah, looking at all his, you know, his his files on his computer, like giving back what was on his computer to the office, you know, because unfinished business, you have to finish it off. You have to do what you can to help him and to help others as well. So that's what we did in March. There was a lot of clearing up, not just that, but whatever debts that you have, you have to list out all of these things, right? So I didn't do it on my own. As I've said, I had my in-laws. So Umi and Wadi, thank you so much. Um, and all my brothers and sisters who are my in-laws, my, my yeah, that's amazing. And then in April, it was it was a month. It was the month of Ramadan, so it was again slowing down and really focusing on your ibadah and all of that. So it was really good. That was a good. That was a good way to start a new routine. With uh, so I was staying with them actually. I was staying with my mother and father um, in-law, so we had a solid routine. So my father in law is in Ustas. So you, you are doing a Jama'ah prayer, like congregational prayers, five times a day. That was really good. That was something I really needed. I needed so, a sorry, solid what routine. In, what is an Ustad? Because we, we have some people who are not Malaysian here. <laughs> he, he's a religious teacher, right? So, yeah. you know, you need that solid ground. You need that faith to keep you going. And you need a routine because you shouldn't be sitting uh, in your bed, in your room, crying for like non-stop because if you cry it can go on and on right so you yeah. need a routine you need to move you need to exercise you need to do all of those things so ramadan came in april so that was fantastic it was really helpful as well and then in may we had raya okay so again just just you and your family that's it and then in june that was recently i started to think about my health i started to think about okay what else do i need because i wasn't cooking my in-laws were doing that for me yeah, I heard that you've um, been eating delicious food for the past four months. I did. Oh, that really helped. That really helped. You have someone prepare your food. Uh, so you don't have to do the cooking. I didn't have to think about what to cook. They were cooking for me. Uh, alhamdulillah for that. I could let, can let that go. I don't have to think about food. Instead, food came to me on the table. Delicious food as well. So I'm telling you, support around you is really, really important. And I had that. Alhamdulillah. I'm blessed. I always think about, mashallah, you know, Allah gave me so many things. In hardship, there's ease, and the ease was the support that my family gave to me. So, yeah, I needed to start thinking about exercise as well. So, in June, I started to have like a solid routine of exercising every morning. I used to exercise before, but it was normally it's not it's not every day. It's it's, but um, yeah, since June, I started to do every morning after subo. You and your own and you, YouTube start exercising, whatever. That was, that was really helpful for me. And then, yeah, we're now in July and um, I've completed my morning period. And uh, after Raya, I went to his, to his um, graveyard and I said my thanks to him uh, for all that he's done. So I'm really happy. I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. I am, inshallah, I, I think he's in a good place. Inshallah, I think he's in a good place. Inshallah. So, yeah. yeah. mm, -mm. But okay. I do want to give you a tip as well. You know, when you're going through some sort of depression or sadness or tragic, you know, a tragedy, uh, you need to know your limits. If you need to sleep, sleep. If you need to rest, rest. If you need help, get help. If you need yeah. to talk it out, find someone. And to me, it was my mother, my mama. So I like to say thank you, mama. Um, you've given me support and motivation all the way because she actually went through the same thing. I'm not, she went through the same thing. Um, many years ago, at about my age, when, when Papa had a stroke as well. So, yeah. who would think that I would go through the same thing, but I did. Uh, right. So, yeah. she knew what to say to me, and that's what I needed. I needed to hear strong motivation to keep going. So, yeah. and also, I want to yeah. say as well, don't watch sad movies and <laughs> listen to sad, sad music. Don't do that, because you start to go into you don't know how yeah. you, you know you start to um, lie on your emotions you start to yeah, yeah. 
it it's, triggers. It's, I mean, it's, you yeah. do have to you do have to acknowledge the pain and the yeah. grief, but you don't have to let it go too far by listening to sad music and all that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's important for that that four month period for you to be around people who support you, and, mm. you know, and having that routine is important as well because it keeps Definitely. you like on your feet. Yeah. Not let you mind. Grounded. Don't don't indulge yourself too long in your sadness because you don't know where it's going to take you. And sometimes you're afraid yeah. that that it's it's you know evil thoughts is going to take you um, to somewhere where you can't stop. You yeah. can spiral out of control. So I knew my limits. Uh, I knew my limits. Like don't do this. Don't look at photos. Don't look at old videos. Uh, you can do it if you want, but you know yeah. not to indulge too much. I mean, I couldn't personally. I couldn't for a while, for a long time. I don't know if I can still, I can still, do, I don't know if I'm able to do it. I can do it now and then if I'm strong, but there are times when I can't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Just honor the, the precious moments, the precious memories, but knowing that, you know, you, your life has to go on. You have to move exactly. forward. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. So, so now you've shared what you've been doing for the past four months, right? Yep. So, yeah. Um, I want you to share with us the five things that you've learned because, you know, this is my English matters, right? Even though we're not really mm -hmm. talking about English, we do want to relate what we've been through, what we've learned from this experience to English. So we always hear our students and our subscribers or followers, they say that, you know, I lost my confidence. Um, it could be through a difficult situation like like yours. You know, you had a very tragic situation that you went through or mm -hmm. it could just be something like a bad comment or your boss gave you a negative feedback on what you did mm -hmm. so how do you regain your confidence when you think that you've lost it so right. i'll let you take the floor <laughs> okay you can interrupt me and add in your stories as well i'm not because i'm sure i mean you have your own experience too so right tip number one is Surround yourself with people who can give you strength. And I've talked about the people who are around me, who are my, my mother and father-in-law, who my, my, my uh, sisters and brothers-in-law who are amazing, and my mama, of course, my friends as well. So for you, whenever you feel that something bad happened to you, like, for example, go, let's go back to English and presentation skills. Let's say you did a really terrible presentation uh, and, and it was... It was oh, tragedy right you lost whatever promotion or whatever it is that you, you were supposed to get because of that so if you after that you should surround yourself with people call your close friends your husband your beloved whatever your sister who can give you strength who can tell you it's okay it's it's all right it's not the end of the world um and and things like that so don't be by yourself don't yeah don't don't indulge in because you'll start thinking negatively. So these people yeah. around you will, will, will give you help. So ask for help. Don't yeah. rely on yourself. That's tip number one. Don't keep it to yourself, right? Because I remember mm -hmm. when um, early in my career, I lost the confidence that I thought I had. Well, I didn't really lose it. It was just, I didn't feel as confident as I was in university, I think. Mm -hmm. And then if I had let myself, I told myself like, you know, I'm not good enough. You know, um, I'm just not competent mm -hmm. enough. If I had let myself tell myself that, it could have gone worse. But I did share it with my family. I did share it with some of my siblings and my mother. And that helped because they told me that, you know, it's, you are talented or whatever. you have skills of your own skills and don't put yourself down. Because I was telling myself I was not good enough. I, I was not as smart enough and things like that. So just sharing it with people, letting them know about your situation, they can help you tell you, put you back into perspective that you are good enough. And exactly. um, they remind you of things that you forgot you had. Yeah. They're like, don't right. you remember you used to do this and that? And like, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Because mm -hmm. you tend to forget who you are when you lose your confidence. Exactly. Okay. All right. So can I go to my tip number two, which is, it's all related, but um, number two is know that it's not the end and you will be all right. It's really important. For me, when I lost my husband, you know, I just said to myself, because you have faith in Allah. So you just say, I know Allah's taking care of me and I know 
everything will be all right. Because when he took my husband away, it was for a reason. And he left me here for a reason. So I know that I will be all right. And I want you to know the same thing as well. Whatever happens to you, inshallah, know that you will be all right. And it's not the end. It's not the end for you. Until it's yeah. the end. So <laughs> that's, that's why I said, you know, you need to remember all the things that you did to get out of a difficult situation before. I mean, even if you yeah. think, okay, this is the ultimate, this is the most, this is the most disastrous, tragic moment ever. But you think, okay, this is, this will pass. Mm -hmm. And yeah. your life continues. There will be more things to come, good things, negative things. It's all yeah. part of life. It's all part of the experience of life mm -hmm. in this world. Yeah. Yeah. When I see what you've gone through i've seen the strength and i've seen how you have you know you had that period where we were all sad of course yeah, you were sad i definitely. was crying every day and of course you were crying even more probably but i've seen because i see you every single week we do our zoom calls um mm -hmm. and i've seen your strength it has given me strength as your sister to see you being strong in the situation i mean of course we're sad of course it's something yeah. that's hard and yeah. then I'm the type of person I tend to fear. I have this anxiety, like I fear that something bad is going to happen. But it could mm -hmm. also be from the past that we had, you know, our dad, mm -hmm. my father, uh, our father in 97, he had, 1997, he had a stroke. And that was a huge, uh, huge event in our life, in our lives. Yeah. So um, I'm always fearing that something like that would happen in the future. And when something like you lost your husband this year, something very a big event happened, and then seeing you recover from it has been helpful for me as well to not fear something bad is going to happen so much and thinking that, you know, even if something bad happens, we are going to be okay, inshallah. We're just going inshallah. to get stronger. Yeah. Right. I want to share something as well. I was listening to Ustaz Yasmin Mujahid on YouTube yesterday. I think it was yesterday, yeah. And, and she gave this perspective. If you have sort of fear you fear something bad will happen a lot like a lost you lost your loved ones for example uh you lost your loved one so pray don't think about it instead pray don't think oh my god this is going to happen i'm going to lose this instead use that outlet to pray um, mm -hmm. to pray to allah and tell what your fear is so that he can give you comfort and all the necessary things uh, that you need to inshallah to get through it yeah. And I'm not saying sadness will, you know, if you, if you pray all the time or you, you know, do you do all these things suddenly and you're just happy all the time, that's impossible. Sadness is part of life. Um, but it's all about what do you do during that situation. It's about getting up and still surviving and still mm -hmm. thriving as much as you can. And yeah. being human, not being perfect through it. You can't be, you can't be perfect through it. You can't be a, a ball of sunshine throughout, obviously. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, and then there's one thing that I learned. Uh, I watched, I can't remember who gave this speech. I think it was, um, oh my gosh, I forgot his name. Never mind. Mm -hmm. But it, he gave this speech about what do you do when you have fear of something that is bad that's going to happen? What do you do? You actually picture yourself something with uh, of something bad happening to you. And then you list it down. Okay, so this happened. What am I going to do? What's, what are my next steps? What will be my next steps? Mm -hmm. So that you'll know that you're not anticipating such a huge disaster. And then you know right. that your what are you going to do next after that? If that disaster even happens, what are you going to do next? Mm -hmm. What are your next steps? So that yeah. has helped me as well. Yeah, right. The next step, the next positive action step that makes you grow or recover yeah. from it, right? That's yeah, exactly. and then it also yeah. It will also help to know that even if a disaster happens, you're going to have people who are there to support you, like your family, your loved ones. Yeah, so that's helpful. Yeah, yeah right. know that you're not alone as well. So ask yeah. for help, which is back to tip number one, right? Surrounded mm -hmm. by, being surrounded by people who can help you. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes you don't even know who are there to help you, right? I'm sure in mm -hmm. your situation, you've had people who you thought, who you maybe even forgot about uh, reach out to you. Exactly. Right? Yes. Oh, I want to tell you this story because I have this, I have a beloved cat. Her name is Rowena. Okay, Rowena. So I named her one after one of the Harry Potter uh, characters. Uh, she, so Rowena is my baby, basically. And um, 
I needed someone to take care of her during my period of bereavement, my Ida period, because I was, I'm not going to be staying here in my house. I was going to stay at, at my in-laws house, which is nearby. So I needed someone to take care of her full, fully, like, can you do it for 130 days? And it's impossible yeah. to imagine who, who will do that for me. I mean, well, let me just give you uh, give people uh, a background because you are in Trunganu and the rest of your siblings are in KL. So the only okay. people in Trunganu are your in-laws. My in-laws, exactly. Abang Majid's family. And yes. Mama, our mother, Mama. is in Kelantan. Exactly. So yeah, we couldn't take care of right. Rowena, even though we love exactly. her as well. Yeah, <laughs> you couldn't. Obviously, I can't like, post her out on you know, post you. <laughs> so somebody stepped up and it was, um, I'll give her name. Her name is Anna. Anna, if you're watching, this is, I'm going to dedicate this to you. Thank you so much. Anna stepped up. She texted me. She said, I'll take care of her. So on the day that Abang passed away, my husband passed away, I said, I need someone to take care. And she stepped up. So she came to my house on the day that he passed away. I came back to this house from the hospital. I told her come to my house and she came and she was efficient throughout. She didn't ask me much because I couldn't speak. I couldn't, I couldn't speak. I just like, okay, take her cage. I was like getting her stuff. Um, and she was also taking care of another kitten of mine. I had another kitten who was also sick. So that's another story, but she was, she was willing to take care of two of my cats. Uh, but the other cat eventually passed away, passed away the next day. But so Rowena, Anna took care of Rowena like her own baby. Spoiling her, like, subhanAllah. And Rowena like, is spoiled. Spoiled. <laughs> yeah, Anna spoiled her more. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't tell people that. <laughs> but, but yeah, she's spoiled. But she's lovely. She does her job. She, yeah. she catches cockroaches and lizards for me. <laughs> she's yeah, not. she's a lovable cat. Yes. So, Anna loved her and Rowena loved her too. That was amazing. So, suddenly, yeah, all these people coming in to help you that you didn't know um that you would never think about like oh i need to ask her help and to ask his help but they stepped up yeah so you have to trust in people that they'll come to you trust that allah will actually god will direct you to these people mm -mm. yeah that was amazing or god directs them to you as well exactly yeah exactly yeah mm -mm. so that was amazing right yeah let's go to so your next tip my next tip is tip number three know that every experience is there to teach you something so it wasn't just abang's death that taught me i mean he himself lived a life of i mean he was a he was a great man obviously i'm not you know that he was a gentleman throughout um he was easygoing he was friendly everybody loved him and so that i mean i i i'm a witness to that because i'm his wife right um, so he was good to me and good to everybody around him. So that taught me to, to, to take his nature of being easygoing, um, helpful and generous, right? So I'll take that with me now that he's gone. And that, yeah, so I, I look back at every experience taught me something. So that taught me that. And then it taught me as well to... To just know that you will go through sadness, but you will be all right. Like I said, you know, that was tip number two. Mm -mm. Inshallah. Okay, and it relates to tip number four. Okay, so let's go back to how to regain your confidence after, after a difficult situation. So if your situation is speaking English confidently and, and suddenly you don't feel confident anymore, I want you to really assess yourself, which is tip number four, listing all your current skills that you have, obviously, and then listing the skills that you need to go to the next level. Yeah. Okay, so let's repeat that. Re listing all your current skills and then listing the skills that you need to go to the next level. So it's a review of things that you already have and things that you need, not that you don't have. You need to believe that if you don't have these things, go find the set of skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because confidence so. is about um, competence as well, right? So if you have the competence, you will 
have the confidence to do something. So, for example, if you're you have you're lacking in confidence when it comes to speaking English, so you have to build that competence to be able to speak in English with confidence. And how are you going to build that? Is you're going to do learning? You're going to be implementing? You may join a class. So it's all about building up the skills, building up the competence to get the confidence. Exactly. Yeah. You really need to sit down. How do we list it out? List it with a pen and a paper. You're yeah. really listing out, and so that you know, okay, these are the things that I need. I need to get a lesson on it. I need to take a class. I need to do something, yeah. and not just think about it. It's not yeah. just about thinking, right? Yeah, right? it's not just about thinking. And knowing that you do have a certain level of skill already, but if you want to get even more confident, then what are you going to do to get to that next level? Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm going to challenge those the viewers out here. What are the skills that you need to go to the next level? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just want to share that, uh, like some people say they were confident in university, but when mm -hmm. they started working, they lost their confidence. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they actually lose the confidence, but I think that the level of confidence that they had at one level may not be enough for that next level, which is a different mm -hmm. situation in your life. Or maybe you right. have a difficult job or a difficult boss even. Mm -hmm. so that level of confidence that you had in university, that was, it became your comfort zone. Yeah. And getting out of that comfort zone, you didn't lose the confidence, but you just need to gain more confidence yeah. to be able yeah. to adapt to that situation. Mm -mm. Yeah, mm -mm. that's right. So, which, go, which uh, leads to my final tip, how to regain your confidence after a difficult situation, which is to set a date and time where you will accomplish your goal or where you will face your fear. So, you do need to set a date and time. For example, if it's about speaking on camera, if that is your fear, because you probably did it before and it backfired, Right. Mm -hmm. And so you need to set a date and say, I'm going to do this again next month. So you do a countdown, like what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? It's really like, like training yourself and preparing yourself for that particular date. So you need to have a little bit of stress level, actually, because when you have a date and a deadline, you will accomplish something that you thought you would never accomplish in just mm -hmm. 30 days, for example. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. And it's good to uh, tell people about your date and your deadline. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if not, it's likely that you're going to like make a promise to yourself and you're not going to keep it. So exactly. you have, when you tell other people, you are going to be accountable for what you said. Right? Yes. Because they will remind you, didn't you say that you're going to mm -hmm. do it? And you're like, oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> You can't run away from from that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you can't pretend that you lost your memory. Important. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm just going to give you an example of how Amna does it to me. So when, you know, before we started my English matters, I was a lecturer. So, I, you know, you teach all the time. So it's normal for you to be teaching in public, right, to your students. But it's not the norm and nobody has taught you how to speak on camera and doing Facebook Lives. And it's not easy, right? And Amna said, um, Tazima, you need to start speaking on camera soon. And I said, yeah, 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 sure. And then she had to give me a deadline. Okay, by next year, this is what we're going to be doing. At least I have a year, okay? I had a year to, to, to do it. So it's not just thinking, oh, I have a year. What do I need in 365 days? What am I going to do to prepare myself? Which is a long time, 365 days. Yeah, I should but have given you a shorter deadline <laughs> yes but at least i had a deadline and we have yeah. like okay we have a mission what's next what's next what's next so for 365 days practiced i practiced speaking on camera on my own right so do it with your phone do do whatever you can it's like it's training yourself until it becomes a habit until you're no you have a thick skin basically to um, you make all the mistakes behind the scenes so that no one can criticize you because you've already criticized yourself it's enough until you're ready you're never going to be fully ready anyway yeah um, but at least you you at least you've practiced it's like yeah it's like running a marathon as well when you're yeah. running you need to 
warm up. You need to do all of those trainings before you go to the Olympics, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're never going to be ready and you're never going to be perfect, right? I mm-hmm. mean, but but you are going to be better than when you were last year or when you were last week, for example. You get better with practice. Yeah, yeah. with practice. And then having that deadline clearly written, whatever, in your phone, etc. So you know, okay, three more days left, mm-hmm. two more mm-hmm. days left. I yeah. Mean, but what yeah, if you are a perfectionist? Like okay, I'm going to wait until I am perfect and then I'm only going to start speaking English or I'm going to do that public speaking when I'm perfect or yeah. I'm going to publish that, whatever, that blog post, that Facebook post only when I'm perfect. What? How do you address those kinds of people? Yeah, I used to have that as well, that, feel, that perfectionist um, characteristics. Yeah, I used to have that. And then I realised it, can't, it can't be perfect until it's out there. Who was it that taught me? I think it was Brendan Rashad, was, was it? Yeah, Brendan he Richard. said, yeah, he said. It can be perfected only after it's been released, right? Exactly. It can only be perfected, yes, after it's been released. Then you can perfect it. Yeah. It's like perfection is something that's an ongoing process. Like you put something out there and then you find the flaws or you find what you can improve on and you perfect it from there. Keep on mm-hmm. getting better by putting yourself out there. Yeah, if I watch my past videos from like last year, mm. I don't think I can sit through them. I'm like embarrassed watching myself. Because <laughs> you're hard on yourself. But yeah, probably I'm hard on myself. You are hard on, I mean, we both are. I'm hard on myself as well. And I think a lot of, a lot of um, the viewers here are hard on themselves. They're, they're perfectionists as well. They're waiting for them to be perfect. Then they want to publish yeah. whatever. Um, but I think that... Yeah, you you need to just get it out there first. Yeah, and then know that you are getting better through the practice. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, I said I've I've read or heard somewhere about being okay with B plus work. I mean, you don't yes. have to expect A star yeah. or A plus. I love that. But knowing that B plus or maybe even a B B minus is it B minus? It's probably B minus. Even B minus work can be helpful for other people so you put your art work out there knowing that there is going to be somebody who is going to find your work helpful to helpful. them exactly yeah mm. yeah okay all right That's so it. let's move on mm-hmm. is that have you finished all your five tips i've finished all my five tips yep all right so do you want to summarize what your five tips are for the people who are late <laughs> okay all right so tip number one is to surround yourself with people who can give you strength Okay, tip number two, know that it's not the end and you will be all right, inshallah. Tip number three, know that every experience, good or bad, is there to teach you something. Number four, list your current skills so that you do know who who you are, that you are good, right? You're good enough, but also listing out the skills that you need to go to the next level that you need, okay? And finally, number five, set a date and time where you will accomplish your goal or face your fear. That's how you regain your confidence. Yeah. Yeah. How Mm -hmm. to regain your confidence even after a difficult situation. So thanks so much, Madam Azima. It's been so fun. So uh, our Facebook watches it watches facebook viewers viewers mm-hmm. and our podcast listeners if you're listening from the podcast we will see more of you over the coming weeks i'm glad that i can take a bit of a rest from the weekly facebook lives and this people are bored of my face already but anyway so what's next for you <laughs> what's, what's next, next for, you, for me okay um so we do have a lot of things coming up very soon and uh, upcoming things inshallah We're going to have a free class called Three Strategies to Sound Confident and Fluent in English. So that's going to be free, hopefully, inshallah, on Facebook. It's a free class, but you do need to register. Amna, do you have the date for that? We is it uh, going to be in? It's going to be in August. Yeah, it's going to be next right? month. I don't have the actual date yet, but it is in my calendar. But I don't want to say the date yet until it's okay. like really confirmed and concrete. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so inshallah, I'll be teaching in August. Yes. In August, I'll be teaching that free class. You guys, stay tuned. And register when we announce that it's opened. Yeah. Oh, and make sure that um, you join our email list to be yeah. notified when the class is open for registration. 
we only do this class uh, twice a year now. We did it a few times mm. last year, but this year, mm -hmm. this is our second time doing it. And it's mm. absolutely free. Yeah. <laughs> so right, it's called yes. three, three strategies to sound confident and fluent in English. Uh, that I'll be hosting a free class in August, inshallah. And CWC, which is our online course, Com uh, Communicate with Confidence, will be also opened in August. That's 12 weeks of classes. Uh, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Look out for our announcements as well in your email. So please become an email subscriber by going to myenglishmatters.com. Okay. And number three, I'm working on compiling our material for a grammar class. So we're going to do like a sort of I don't want to say an epic grammar class, but like a course, it's, gonna, right? it's going to be practical and relevant. It's a course. It's a grammar course. Um, yeah. So if you want to brush up on your grammar, um, etc., look out for that. Mm. Uh, we do teach to grammar in Members Monthly. Mm -hmm. However, um, we thought it would be better if it was all like compiled into one. So you're going to re-record the lessons, right? So that it becomes a course that people can go through in their own time mm -hmm. yeah so they, they can, can watch course. it and they can also listen i want to design it so that it's also easy on the ears so they don't yeah. necessarily but they do need an internet connection um but it's easy on the ears so that they don't ne necessarily have to watch but they can also understand hopefully yeah that's so time wait for that. <laughs> all right, all right well, so those are the three things that you've been that we are working on that you are working on mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. All right then. Yeah. So is there anything else that you'd like to share before we say goodbye to our viewers? Viewers. Let me oh, see let's the comments. Thank you. Yeah, we can. Do we have any Do you have any um, questions? Questions before we, see. Go. We, before we go off, let's take a couple of whatever questions or comments or anything like that. Um Fafa Liza, she's our student, I believe. She says surround yourself with positive people. Experience is the best teacher. List down the skills, skills to go to the next level. Set a deadline. So she's helped yeah, to summarize for you all. Thank you. It's brilliant. Oh, she yeah. said, I brought a microphone. Can you bring that up? Where I can't find it. Where is that? Let me show. Let me bring it up. Um for brought Lisa, a microphone. I, yeah, just like you, madam. Okay. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> great, great, great. It's a good yeah. investment. Good investment. Okay. Mm. I don't think I've ever regretted right. buying this microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, any more? Mm. This, Jalia, this morning I did my presentation for the APEC School Leadership Program. The participant is from all over the APEC region and quite nervous. While talking, I remember the way <laughs> I'm not nice talking, so calm and smile. Alhamdulillah. Oh, oh, thanks so much for sharing. That's great. Fantastic. Yay. Great. Good job. Oh, yeah. What about this? Um, oh, you mm, want to share a comment? Mm, okay, go on. You read that one first. Uh, Farah say, Farah Liza. There is this toxic attitude of mine which makes me comfortably not feeling guilty for not following the plan I did. You want to address <laughs> that? Uh, yeah, that means that she, pro pro she probably has this feeling where if she sets a deadline and she doesn't meet it, she doesn't feel guilty. So I want to add something to that, which is to tell other people who will push you to fulfill that deadline until you feel sort of a bit of shamed or guilty. Sometimes you do need that. You do need people to um, remind you to do it. Yeah, and you do need that, people. Yeah. And then, and then I would say, imagine yourself, if you did it, what would happen? What is the reward waiting you if you did it? You can mm. finally celebrate. You can oh, finally something is, you know, something is fulfilled. You feel accomplished. Yeah, you can eat so, ice cream. You know, whatever <laughs> it is. That have a massage. Have. Okay, people don't take massages yeah. now, but yeah. yeah. Give yourself and a reward. Holiday, well. Reward yourself. Well, not holiday. You can't go on holiday now, but probably plan. I'm going to go on a holiday in whatever, two years time. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> or do a shopping go go on a shopping spree however that you want to reward yourself and you only reward yourself if you accomplish it so have yeah. that in mind yeah okay so yeah i guess that's it right emna 
Yeah, that's all from us today. Okay, so thanks everybody for joining us. I hope that the tips that Madam Azima has shared has helped you on how to regain your confidence, even after a difficult situation. And uh, we hope to see you next week again on Tuesday at 11 a.m. And uh, that's all from us. And Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Bye.